so in continuation to the general characters of fungi uh, we will see what is aprosorium what is hostoria what is hyphae i think we have already seen what is hyphae and what are the types of hyphae also we have seen so now we will see the difference so what their functions and all those things now we'll see so my name is janet shankar reddy working as assistant professor in kasar best of you so let's start with the general definitions so generally aprosorium is attachment organ of fungi it generally attaches the uh, leaf surface or whatever the surface it lands on so when it comes to hostoria it is generally a nutrient absorbing organ or energy absorbing organ of fungi because whatever the energy or whatever the food material or nutrients that the fungi will requires that it can absorb through in specialized organ called hostoria then uh, another one more structure is called a penetration peg hyphal organ it actually gives pressure so that imagine if it is a leaf surface so if it is a landing and spore is landing and it produce a prosorium attachment organ and it need to go inside the epidermal cells right so the penetration peg is like a needle for our understanding i am telling it's like a needle it's a just penetrates inside the leaf so imagine this is a leaf it just penetrates or gives a pressure to the leaf surface so that it will automatically penetrates inside the leaf or epidermal cells so if we see generally structure this you know this is a spore so actually a spore is landing on the leaf surface this is the leaf surface so once after landing what will happen it will starts to germinate with the help of germination tube so then you can ask me directly that why can't the spore germinate or why can't the spores directly penetrate inside here there is a reason i will tell you so it germinate and gives a germination tube and it produce a structure called aprosoria aprosoria is the attachment organ of fungi so once after landing the spore it can't able to directly penetrate inside because if some kind sometimes what will happen some maybe heavy winds or maybe uh, because of maybe winds or some other kinds of stuff there might be a chance that the spore may be washed out from the leaf surface so to prevent that in order to prevent that in order to prevent the leaf surface very strongly so it produce another structure called aprosorium so that's why i told you that aprosorium is the attachment organ of fungi you can also you know mention like anchoring organ of fungi it it strongly holds or it strongly attaches the leaf surface not only leaf surface whatever the surface lands on mostly it lands on leaf right so it attaches on the leaf surface once it is landing on the leaf surface what it will do as i told you it produce a, a, a penetration peg it, it's an hyphal organ where it gives a pressure or it produce a pressure so that it will enter into the host surface or penetration so this penetration peg from the aprosoria is produced and starts to penetrate inside the cells so that is epidermal cells so from this penetration peg a bubble like structure or maybe like a knob like structure we can see here a bubble like structure or knob like structure is produced that is called hostoria this hostoria actually starts to penetrate inside the cells okay so epidermal cells intracellular and intracellular will be there right so this penetration peg goes to intracellular and as well as uh, when it comes to hostoria it goes to intracellular sorry intracellular intracellular so when it enters inside the cell this is inside the cell right so we know very well that if a, a plant cell is a eukaryote it contains all the kinds of ribosomes cytoplasm nucleus and all the stuff will be there and dna and everything will be there in each and every single cell right so it starts to absorb the nutrients so whatever the nutrients that the plant is producing for themselves because plant is a chlorophyllous right so plant has a chlorophyllous so that it can produce their own food material so whatever the food material that is producing for themselves that is a plants so through a specialized structure called hostoria it starts to absorb the nutrients then you can ask me why can't the spore directly get the nutrients so if i ask the same question so why can't uh, the same eyes or whatever the nose can't perform the same function so we can't able to eat with the eyes or we can't able to breathe with eyes we can't able to breathe with every single thing only one thing right so that's why however we our body have a specialized organs to get the specialized thing done for example eating we have a mouth that is a specialized structure only meant for eating right so we have a mouth so sorry we have a nose especially meant for breathing so for in order to get their nutritional requirement fungi also produce different kind of things so spore simply lands germination tube germinates and produce aprosorium aprosorium function is Uh, attachment organ in penetration peg goes inside and the hostoria specialized structure goes inside the cell and starts to uh, absorb the nutrients so 
due to that what will happen automatically the cell starts to die the died cells we are seeing outside as a symptom that is the only reason okay so when it comes to here the function of upper storium is attachment organ the function of new uh, astoria is nutrient absorbing organ these are all very important things so here the term astoria was coined by anton de berry whereas the term upper storium was coined by ab frank so when it comes to different shapes of astoria just now i told you astoria is the nutrient absorbing organ right so these are all the different shapes of astoria and the pathogen that produce so not all the pathogen will produce same kind of astoria right not all human beings are behaving like same in the meantime all pathogens are different kinds of pathogen will produce different kinds of structures the different shapes of astoria so now we will see what are the different shapes of astoria and knob like astoria is produced by albugo finger like astoria is produced by uh, uh, pythopthora branched or peg like astoria is produced by sclerospora bulb like astoria is produced by cuscuta wedge shaped astoria is produced by archithobium finger shaped again downy mildew all downy mildew is produced generally in finger shape globus astoria powdery mildew pyriform astoria that is uh, basidiopora so these are one one example that doesn't mean the other pathogens won't produce this kind of astoria so it's just an example one one example i gave here for our understanding so now we will see so i told you that what is astoria and upper storia right astoria is the nutrient absorbing organ upper storia is the attachment organ so now we will uh, see what are the different types of uh, uh, differences between uh, astoria and upper storia so just starts with the uh, definition astoria is generally like a fungal structures the only function is it penetrate inside and absorb the nutrients or the energy requirements that is required for the pathogen so if the pathogen want to multiply if the pathogen want to reproduce it is also required the continuous supply of nutrients the continuous supply of energy requirements or the uh, nutrient absorption was met by hastoria so when it comes to upper storium upper storium is a hyphal structure as i told you what is hyphae it is a simply a tubular like structure or simply hair like structure where uh, uh, we, you know um, different kinds of uh, material will be there spits and carper that helps in the growth of mycelium i mean hive and all those things that was discussed in the in the previous general characters so when it comes to upper storium here upper storium is also like hyphal structure which mainly helps in the attachment of the host surface so this aprosorium won't penetrate inside from this aprosorium a specialized structure goes inside that is penetration peg from from penetration peg especially another specialized structure will come that is astoria i think i already we have already seen in the uh, pre before slide there is a leaf surface imagine this is a spore landing at, uh, and it produces specialized structure aprosorium and it is penetrating inside once it is penetrating inside another structure is produced that is astoria simply astoria is the nutrient absorbing organ aprosorium is the attachment organ let's see what is the function very simple nutrient absorption when it comes to astoria so when it comes to aprosorium pressing organ or attachment organ was once it is attached then it starts to produce penetration peg that is a different scenario so when it comes to the general meaning astoria is actually a latin word which means who draws hair drains or drink so it is absorbing the nutrients like nutrient like for example we have a old uh, uh, you know ad where uh, if you eat if you drink rasna you will get energy from the sun so where the sun is showing like we draining the energy like a straw right so such kind of uh, thing when it uh, same applies to astoria it the who draws or drains or drink so it's the generally latin mean latin word so when it comes to upper storium so pressing organ or oppressed organ in general latin language so the general structure is a root like structure so generally it is a root like structure so when it comes to aprosorium generally it's a bulb like structure so the shape is a knob shaped so in general knob shape like this the shape is generally knob shaped whereas when it comes to aprosorium it is a peg shaped so now the thing is how aprosorium is penetrating inside right so leaf surface is very strong where the spore is very small and minute so how how much pressure how it is producing this much pressure actually this aprosorium contains high amount of glycerol high amount of glycerol that glycerol creates high turgor pressure so the turgor pressure helps to create or helps to penetrate inside the epidermal cells so because of presence of uh, uh, glycerol so this uh, 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 though it creates high turgor pressure so that it can enters into the inside the leaf cells so now we will see the difference between septate and aseptate hype i think we have already seen what is hype tubular like such what are the different types of hype septate hype and non septate hype are non septate hype is otherwise called as aseptate hype so now we will see general differences between septate hype and aseptate hype 
so when it comes to the starts with the definition it is a fungal vegetative structure that contains septa for example we can see here imagine this is a mic uh, hyphae if it is a contains septa it is called septate if there is no septa see we can see every single uh, uh, cell are i mean uh, uh, cells are differentiated by presence of septa so this septa uh, if it is presence of septa it is called a septate hyphae if you see here when it comes to a septa it is also a vegetative structure which lacks a septa or which is absence of septa if you see here this uh, hyphae contains uh, no septa right so imagine like a dam if the dam contains gates like a septa it is called a septate if the dam contains no gates if if there is no gates it is not considered as dam for our understanding i am telling so if the dam contains no gates this is called a septate hyphae now other names so septate hyphae has no other names when it comes to a septate hyphae a septate hyphae is otherwise called as a non septate hyphae also called as cenocytic hyphae it's a very very important i have seen this question i saw this question uh, uh, years before so a septate hyphae otherwise called as cenocytic hyphae non septate hyphae otherwise called as cenocytic hyphae or a septate hyphae so perforated cross walls are present in uh, septate hyphae that is a cross walls whereas perforated cross walls are absent cellular components are present whereas cellular components are absent so when it comes to risk of damage imagine if there is no septa imagine there is no septa there might be a chance once uh, uh, there is no chance of uh, risk of um, uh, damage of mycelium so i will tell you one thing let me so imagine if the gates are there even though one gate is damaged we can prevent the remaining uh, a nuclear comp um, a cellular components if the gate will be there so even though if i imagine so this is a um, uh, hyphae right so some uh, so hyphae gone through uh, some kind of damages right so imagine if hyphae gone through here there, it is damaged here only this particular component is damaged so there is uh, no risk of uh, fungi so if the one cell is damaged no problem because uh, septa was there so that it can eliminate the risk of damaging the whole mycelium so when it comes to a septate hyphae if there is no cross walls if the one is damaged if the if the particular part is damaged entire fungi is at risk entire mycelium is at risk so when it comes to nuclei so septate hyphae that is the presence due to the presence of septa it can divide the nuclei into individual components because it presence of septa right so because uh, it has no septa whereas a septate has no septa one long multinucleate cell is present only one long multinucleate cell is present so advanced or primitive it is an advanced form because uh, presence of septa is a very advanced form if something is damaged due to presence of septa other can be uh, saved so because of no septa here there is a, a you know entire mycelium is at risk so it is a primitive forms so this is the most advanced uh, adaptation when it comes to higher uh, fungi that is a basidiomycota and ascomycota having septate kind of hyphae whereas when it comes to oomycetes and zygomycetes these are of the lower fungi so whereas uh, as a and uh, hyphae kind of mycelium can be observed so now we will see general some you know like uh, uh, exam orientation so motile asexual spores of oomycota so in the first class we discussed oomycota is uh, otherwise uh, comes under actually chromista it is a lower fungi so generally oomycota cell wall is made up of cellulose generally fungal cell wall is made up of chitin whereas oomycota cell wall is made up of cellulose so here asexual spores as i told you that fungi can reproduce by means of both sexual and asexual spores right so here what are the asexual spores of oomycota oomycota produce juice spores as asexual spores so this juice spores as as sexual spores woo spore as a sexual spore so juice spores are otherwise called as planar spores otherwise called as swam spores these are all the other names so when it comes to motile asexual spores of fungi so the motile spores are called as planospores here we already mentioned here right so the asexual spores of j oomycota is called juice spore otherwise called as planospore otherwise called as swam spores so juice spore contains flagella so that it can um, uh, helps in uh, you know um, Uh, locomotion right so non motile asexual spores so these juice spores are motile whereas non motile asexual spores of the oomycota fungi is called as a planospore generally all oomycota are uh, 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 you know uh, motile so generally non motile asexual spores are called as a planospores planospores means motile spores a planospores means non motile spores this chromista is otherwise called as actually oomycota comes under the classification chromista 
so this chromista comes under uh, otherwise sorry otherwise called as traminophiles before in 2001 i think a dick he named it as uh, traminophiles later name changed to chromista in 2008 classification by cricketal i think so so process of formation of spores is called sporogenesis or sporulation if the the process of formation of spores is called sporulation or sporogenesis so generally budding spores are called blastospores otherwise called as blastosconidia so this kind of questions we may expect in exams so whatever the classes everything here after we are going to publish everything is not only important for semester related but also important for exams not only net maybe ars rb maybe whatever the kind of exams that is related to plant pathology this videos are definitely helpful so the remaining things we will continue in the next videos so if you want further information uh, students can refer this book a vision into plant pathology a complete student version so for further uh, information students can reach at www.geekyresearch researchcom stay geeky stay tuned we are team geeky researchers